Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again, TGIF. Thank God it's Friday, you made it through another week. We have a special week today because it's uh, Christmas Eve Eve, which means the day before Christmas Eve, uh, kind of a special day for me because I'm rushing around trying to get all, I, I wait till last minute to do my wrapping, things like that. I don't know why. I buy all my gifts months in advance but when it comes to like doing the wrapping and getting it all together, I'm kind of a last minute kind of person. They say sometimes I procrastinate and I tell those people, just wait. Now, uh, for today's episode, we got a little bit of a, a mosh coming up. As so, you know, I like the moshes. I like to mix it up a little bit. But uh, I have another gift that I'm going to give to my sister that uh, some of you longtime subscribers remember. I picked up a few months ago from a, a house that was... Uh, moving and it was a house that was in my town for many many years and there was a lot of good antiques thrown out so I I, I grabbed this and I knew it would I'll show you that in a minute uh we got a, a, a nice couple nice cards and a, a lot of well wishes and merry Christmases from you and happy holidays and I appreciate it much so let's get started first of all with the let's see what's what that gift is for my sister right now Okay, here it is. Now, a couple months ago, I was on my walk late at night, and uh, like I said, they were throwing out all the antiques I guess they didn't want to take with them, and this was one of them. This is a beautiful vintage, probably, what, maybe 1930s, 1940s clock book bookcase. Now, my sister's an author, so this was actually something that she would really like, and this is as found condition. You could see it was, it was dusty, it was... Uh, it's in good shape. There's no really chips or anything. <laughs> Look at the dust. Years of dust on top. Here's the clock back. You can see the the back of the clock here. Um, and we'll, we'll, we'll see if that works. And here's the cord. It looks like somebody added a longer cord. And look at that old friction tape from years ago. You see that? That's old time, old timey friction tape. But it's in good shape. It's just the glass needs to be cleaned. Uh, the clock needs to be clean. I don't know if it works, but these old electric clocks, they seem to run forever. But uh, I like to clean it up. Got to be careful and then polish the wood. So let's see what we could do. The first thing we're going to do is we'll see if we could take that glass, what it takes to take now that out. Now we reposition the, uh, the clock horizontally because we don't want that glass falling out and breaking. I don't have any time to replace it now. And you can see, that's one thing you can always date an antique by looking at the screws. You can see the screws here are uh, slotted screws. So that's usually an indication of a pre-1950s item. Okay, six screws. Uh, we got the clock face. Now look at that. How beautiful is that? Huh? Look, I love that font of the uh, numbers. Isn't that just beautiful? I, I've never seen that font before, really. And you can see here... Um, what we're going to do is we're going to, like I said, clean this up. We'll vacuum everything. But let me get the glass out first. You can see here now. It looks, again, four more screws. Looks like it takes across the, the panel over here, and that should pop up. The glass was, you know, dirty over the years, and that makes a huge difference. Now, underneath the square frame, the glass was held on. And you always have to mark every time before you move it. See that little T up there in pencil? Uh, that shows it goes to the, always mark it because when it goes back, the screws always fit and always put the same screws back in the same hole. Now, there was molding holding it on on both sides. This side here had a, a, a little brad going through and it split the wood. You see here? Let me put it apart. Split the wood, but we can glue that back together that you'll, you know, you don't ever see this anyway. It's behind and in the back. But when I told you that this glass was dirty, uh, look at that, you know, what a huge difference it makes when you clean up just the glass, because I knew that was in good shape, the clock face. So let's uh, clean the glass and then we'll get to the now, wood. Now, I can't stress how important it is to have a comfortable work area when you're working on things like this, because you don't want to be bending over and doing this while it's standing up. Uh, now we took two pieces of uh, wood dowel here. We're going to cover it with a, a uh, uh, just an, a rag here. And the reason we're doing that is we're going to take the clock face you see how I set the hand so that there, it's a quarter after nine. So I could put that over here, rest it between these two dowels here, and it will not mess with the hands. Now, to take the back off the clock, you'll see that all these holes are oversized so that they can pull off once you pull these two screws out, except for this one here. And the reason that's like that 
is because this is threaded on so that to in order to get this off you have to hold the hand okay just hold it gently and screw this off and you can see it's threaded it will come off this way don't try and pull that off that's threaded okay and uh and now we'll take the back off okay now i don't even know i didn't plug it in yet to see if it works and uh what we're going to do first of all these things they rarely go but we're going to take an acid brush brush and a vacuum cleaner hold the vacuum cleaner close and we're going to get rid of all the dirt and that we can get just by brushing it off and sucking it out with the vacuum now there's a special oil that they use for clocks and watches and do not <laughs> do not do what i'm doing right now but if you ever get one that's an older do not use three in one do not use wd-40 or anything like that because those will actually do more damage than good. I have some uh, Zoom Spout, and this is a non-detergent special oil. But and when you oil a clock, you believe it or not, more oil is worse than you take a, on a toothpick and you just touch around the bearing surface. You know where the pin comes through the over here. Just touch it around here and just drop a not even a drop, a, just a speck of oil on there. That's all you do on all the spots that you can get to anything that do not spray or do not try and clean or whatever unless you're a clock guy and if you are a clock guy chime in let us know how you would do it but uh, that's what i do just to get around if there is uh, there's nothing i don't think dry on here everything looks good so now we'll clean it up with the vacuum again and we'll put it back together okay now we get to the part where i should plug it in i probably should have did this before i started messing with it right but let's see first thing we'll do is we'll wipe this plug off and plug it in okay we're plugged in. Now there's a little knob back here that usually you have to you have to spin to get it to go. There we go. Oh my god. It's starting. Okay, now you heard that squeaking, that squealing. I took it back apart and I went over it again with some more zoom spout and hit every single shaft all the way through. And look at that now. Do you see that? Do you see how this is uh, spinning now? Watch. No more squeaking. That's the way it should spin. Let's plug it in again and see what happens. Okay, here we go. We're going to plug it in. Okay, once it's plugged in, you have to give this a spin. Okay, it's working now. I think it had, the, the problem was lack of lubrication or lubrication with the wrong oil, which made it gum up. You see that now, how it's spinning and working? Now we have to just let that work in for a while. Now we're ready to work on the, uh, the finish. We just want to give it a quick polish. And the first thing you want to do is if you don't have a brush for your soft brush for your vacuum, this is comes in so handy. Always vacuum off the dust and everything and then wipe it with a damp rag uh, just to get any dirt off. And then we'll hit it with some mineral spirit. So let's do now, this. When I say damp, I mean there should be you can't wring out any water. We went over the whole thing with a damp cloth, made sure there was no dust or anything left. Now we're going to take some odorless mineral spirits and, a, and a dampen it with a rag. Of course, wear gloves when you do this, and we're going to wipe it down with mineral spirits. And we're calling this project done. Let's take a look at it. You see, I just went over it with some lemon oil. Lemon oil is very good to uh, feed the wood, and you, you see, it'll dry in, you know. It's still a little bit shiny in some spots. That'll dry into the wood, and uh, everything looks good. And here's my favorite part. Look at that. Listen, can you hear the action? It just has a beautiful hum to it, you know. Again, re-oiled it, and uh, just look at that beautiful face, right? With the clear glass now. What a difference it was. So I know she's going to love this. I know I love it. What do you think? Okay, next up, we earlier this week, we were talking about how uh, when companies do their hand grinding, you could have different variations in tools. And I was at the Home Depot the other day, and I said, let me see if that's still the case with the channel locks. Uh, and I went and, and checked it out and shot some video. Let's check that out. Okay, so I had to stop at my local Home Depot and I figured while I was there, let me just check and see if there's still any differences 
in the grinds with those pliers I was talking about uh, since uh, the last video. Now I lined up, they had four in stock. This is the 369. And uh, if you squeeze the bottom and look at the top, you see the amount of gap that you'll have. For some guys, they like gap. Me, I, I don't for the work I do. And I found a pair, look at this pair. It actually closes at the top, even better than the ones I own presently. So you could see there are some differences. And if you look at the even the needle nose pliers, you could see the difference in the grinds all the way up to the tip. Some, uh, you know, end a little bit shorter. And it, again, they're all acceptable. There's nothing wrong with them. It's just that there is subtle differences. And it's nice to be able to choose when there's a variety around. Then, of course, I had to look at some of the hammers, you know, being a hammer guy. And uh, it's funny, that every once in a while around this season, they come out with new one. Now, uh, it seems that Crescent has uh, been taking the, the market with the new and improved styles. Uh, they came out with their framing hammer but what i like about this hammer i do like an axe handle on a hammer but look at that beautiful clear lacquer orange that they have on the bottom that's really nice good looking again these are you know they're uh different style from crescent came out with this one here it says you see this eye beam style they got a plastic insert when uh and it says 70 percent less vibration which i'm calling bs on because those steel hammers you're always going to have vibration and if you're going to buy a steel hammer Buy this one here. Buy a good old S-Wing. You cannot lose with a USA-made S-Wing. Okay, last up, uh, you know, when we celebrate the holidays, one thing nice about uh, traditional holidays is people send out cards. And, um, you know, some people go really above and beyond with their cards, you know. Uh, I, I've, I've done it certain years, but I'm, I'm guilty of not doing it every year. You know, sometimes they're more plain and you just grab whatever's on the shelf. But some guy, some people really go out of their way. Some people make customized cards, which I always thought was terrific. And uh, But my buddy Brent, uh, I was in Scouts with Brent for a long time. Uh, and uh, he had left a card at the, at the house along with some bird seed for the birds, taking care of the birds here. And... Uh, but he left a, a, a beautiful card, and it was so nice. I just wanted to share it with you. So let's check that out. Now, here's the card that Brent had sent. And what a nice card this is. But first of all, it's a flat card. But watch this. When you press it together like this, it opens up, and it creates a 3D. You see this? And when you look through the front here, it turns into a 3D scene. And I'll show it to you. Okay, when the card is opened and you come in here, you could see it creates a 3D scene. And it's almost like you're stepping into somebody's living room. You see the wooden floor and the beautiful Christmas tree uh, in the back there. There's a uh, fireplace you could see and a nice chair back there. But just beautiful. And what's even better is when you press this little button here. Watch what happens. What a great card, huh? So in closing, special thanks to Brent for that beautiful card. And I wanted to wish you all a, a very Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays, whatever you celebrate. And thank you all for uh, tuning in. And uh, I hope to see you again on Monday. Take care. Have a nice weekend. Enjoy your holiday. Bye-bye. <laughs>